Just what does that mean to you, uh, Tannis? Well, well the city of Tannis is one of the possible resting places of the Lost Ark. The Lost Ark? Yeah, the Ark of the Covenant, the chest the Hebrews used to carry around the Ten Commandments. What do you mean, what do you mean Ten Commandments? You're talking about the Ten Commandments? Yes, the actual Ten Commandments, the original stone tablets that Moses brought down out of Mount Harab and smashed, if you believe in that sort of thing. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Mystery Vault Podcast. I'm your host RJ McCready and for this episode I'm going to be taking a look at the Ark of the Covenant and something which I'm sure you guys will probably agree with me which has become famous through the film Indiana Jones and the Rages of the Lost Ark. It's one of my favourite movies. Um, after doing the research for this though, there's a lot in that film that basically tells you all that you need to know about the Ark because... Uh, Indiana Jones at the beginning of the movie, he, him and Marcus go through a, a quick synopsis about what happened to the Ark and where it came from. There's also a little bit of truth about uh, the Nazis that they were interested in trying to find these ancient artifacts from the Bible. Uh, Heinrich Himmler was actually uh, very interested in it. Also the story of Shishka, which they mention in the, the film, the Egyptian pharaoh who sacked or invaded uh, Jerusalem in that film in 10 BC is is based on on fact as well. Um, so the story is told that he took the the ark and brought it back to the ancient city of Tanis, which is a real place, um, but it wasn't a lost city. It's in the Nile Delta. Uh, I think you can actually visit that today. So um, that's pretty cool. Um, but obviously that was just all. Sort of just tweaked a little bit for the movie but it's a lot of fun but there's there's some facts there in the film which I was quite surprised with actually myself when I looked into it um, the other bit with the Raiders and I'm talking a lot about Raiders here actually I could actually talk about the whole film because I love it but um, in the movie you actually get to see the Ark as well and the thing with that is that was taken from a design plan from the Bible which is the book of Genesis which was the second book in the Bible um, so you've actually, yeah. You know, this is the crazy thing with the Ark, is what I'm going to get into here. Is that you actually got a plan on how you can make this? And so in the movie, um, when I think of the Ark, I basically think of the Ark from from the film, and I think that's a really good interpretation of it. Um, so the object of today's episode, uh, what's interested me and the reason why I'm doing this episode today is that um, obviously the Bible is one of the most famous books in the world. It's nearly two and a half, three thousand year, years old. It goes right back. Um, and what I wanted to talk about today is whether you're, you're religious or not. What interests me about uh, the Bible itself is that they they do mention religious artifacts and now whether that's uh, what I'm going to be talking about today the Ark of the Covenant you've also got the uh, Holy Grail the Spear of Destiny the Forms of Christ the actual um, cross itself uh, there's talk that these artifacts actually still exist today and that's what interests me and that's the reason we're going to do this episode today as a mystery thing is you know, is is there any truth to it? Are these artifacts still out there somewhere? Um, are they real or are they not? But before I get into that, let's turn back the time and what I'm going to do is just give you a brief uh, story of Moses. You know, a little bit of a history lesson here, but like I say, this is just brief. It's just what I've gone over. Um, so you may be aware of the story of Moses. Again, it was portrayed in a very good film back in 1956 called The Ten Commandments with uh, Charlton Heston and Yul Brenner playing Ramsey's, Ramsey the Second. Great movie. Go, goes through everything uh, that you need to know about it. But um, Moses was a Israelite and he, he grew up in Egypt uh, with, he, with an enslaved minority which is his people which were the Israelites, uh, the Hebrews, the Jews today. Um, he fled from Egypt and he went across the Red Sea to the Midan uh, where he encountered the, the famous story where he was in the desert and he encountered the, the angel um, on Mount Herob and it was a story of the burning bush and he was basically instructed by God to go back to Egypt to lead the exodus of the Israelites and um, to help them escape. And he did this and 
There's actually other mysteries here in this story, um, but I've been looked into with the part, the very famous parting of the Red Sea. Um, and then Moses manages to escape to Mount Siana, uh, where he is then instructed by God. And this is this famous event that took place where he was given two stone tablets by God um, with the Ten Commandments. And whether you are not familiar with them, that state the uh, lines of, you know, you shall not kill, uh, love line neighbour, etc. Um, so then, a year after that, um, well, in 40 years in total, the, the Israelites and Moses, they, they spend time in the desert. Um, but a year after this event with the Ten Commandments, uh, Moses was instructed by God uh, a basic blueprint of where he was going to contain these commandments, and it was the Ark of the Covenant. And this is mentioned in the book of Genesis. You can still see that. Well, take a look for yourselves, but let's just read that now. So it says it's 2.5 cubits long. Uh, 1.5 cubits wide, 1.5 cubits high. So in measurements, that's uh, two and a half cubits in length is 131 centimeters, 52 inches, and the height and width is uh, saying 1.5 cubits, which is 79 centimeters, 31 inches. So it's not massive. It's not huge. Um, and then the other design patterns on there is the uh, two golden cherubs facing each other. And then it had two golden rings either side with poles to carry. And it's made of acacia wood and cladded in gold. And as I said before, the, we've all seen, most of us have seen Indiana Jones. So the arc that you see in that movie is what I basically get in my head now. It's a good description of it. And it was also, there was a tabernacle that was built. So it's like a holy tent. So it was carried around, and when they put it down to rest, they put a tent over it, and no one, no one was allowed to go in or see it except a a high priest at the time. So, but again, this is also mentioned in Raiders, where you, if you open it up, it contains the power of God, and uh, it will basically destroy you. So you weren't weren't allowed to look inside it. And I also get into a theory of that later on. It's also where the Nazis in the film got their uh, fingers uh, burnt as well, which served them right. So, um, but anyway, going back to the the story. So the Israelites, um, or the Hebrews, spent time in the desert. They spent forty years, and then before they went on to what they called the the promised land, which is uh, the land of Canaan, uh, which is now Israel. And after spending 40 years in the desert, uh, the Hebrews are now led by Joshua, which is uh, Moses' right-hand man as a prophet. And this is where you come to the first battle with the Ark, which now tells you the power, basically gives you a demonstration of the power of the Ark, which is the Battle of Jericho, uh, which was fought by the Israelites for the, uh, the conquest of Canaan. And this is um, a famous uh, battle where the Ark was carried around the city of Jericho for six days. And on the seventh day, they used the uh, ram's horns, or the Jericho horns as they call them, uh, which composed so loud that it blew down the walls of Jericho. Uh, which is the, the the famous story, which is another again, it's another mystery. You know, the horns of Jericho did that. Were they were they loud enough to blow down a wall? But the ark was involved with this, so it, it just demonstrated the power that if you had the ark, you could take down a city. Um, so yeah, Jericho was taken. Uh, the Israelites um, had the ark, and then after this, and again guys, I'm just going over this briefly here with this, this history line, uh, the, the Philistines then captured the ark, and they had it for seven months, but in that seven months they had nothing but bad luck, there was like a, a plague, um, so they felt that having the ark was some kind of punishment from God, so they gave the ark back to the Israelites. Now, when the Philistines brought the ark back to the Israelites, uh, this is where, the, where they found out the actual power of the ark in terms of not to actually open it up. So the Israelites were concerned that the ark wasn't the real deal and it didn't contain the tablets. So 
they opened up the ark to have a look and when they did this apparently um, according to text it killed 50,000 people with the, with the power of opening this up and then after this following a timeline uh, you had King David who had the ark at Jerusalem uh, you had King Solomon who was the son of King David who then constructed the Temple Mount which is considered the holiest temple in Jerusalem today uh, which some believe is where which is the one of the resting places of the ark uh, but it was up until 587 BC where you had the Babylonian conquest and it's this point in the timeline where the ark disappears and this is the point I think where it, it becomes lost because the accounts are you've had the Babylonian conquest could they have taken it from themselves and not told anybody about it uh, the other story is, is there's the uh, prophet Jeremiah who is said to have hidden the ark before the actual conquest in the cave and then after the conquest he's then taken the ark to Europe to a safe place and that's where in Europe he actually took this place which then becomes the mystery so this is where the story of the ark forks out to different locations was it the Babylonians did it go down to Ethiopia which is another possible place uh, the place they think that Jeremiah took the ark was to Ireland and there's a story where there's actually some evidence that a Hebrew called Labriel uh, went to Ireland in 580 BC around about this time uh, so there's evidence in Ireland of that which kind of just makes that a little bit plausible um, then after the conquest many years after this you had the Persians who took back Jerusalem and allowed the um, Jews back into um, Jerusalem and then they said that there's no ark there and this is where the ark uh, disappeared or did it? You know, just one of my one of my views that it could just be that they said, "Yeah, it has disappeared, so nobody else would come and take it." You know, that's what's what's better way to, to let people know that it's not here because someone someone's taken it. And we don't know where it is, or is it still there and they kept it there up until today? So I, I don't know. Um, then over the time, you've got the Romans that have turned up, and they said that they couldn't find it. Uh, then you had the uh, Knights Crusade in, in Jerusalem in the 10th, 11th century, uh, which is portrayed in a, another film called The, the Kingdom of Heaven. And this, this is where the, um, the Knights Templar come in, um, which is the very famous Catholic military order. Uh, they are put together like bodyguards to protect Christian pilgrims on the journey to Jerusalem. Their HQ is actually the Temple Mount in Jerusalem and there is speculation that they took the Ark to a safe place and it got brought, brought back to the British Isles uh, somewhere. Uh, I think there's several several possible locations and there is some evidence in Petra Jordan by an archaeologist who found some evidence to say that this, this might be a fact. I think it's like a wall description of the uh, Knights Templar carrying a arc type object. Uh, but there's many of those, there's many of those around the world, uh, which I'll get into in a minute. So, as you can see, there is this timeline where you've it's gone from Moses, who has created the ark, to it being handed over. There's, there's the Jerusalem that has been invaded, the conquest, um, the Knights Templar. Uh, the Babylonians, there's people, the Philistines, there's people saying we've had it and we've given it back and it's been taken away. Um, and this is over quite a, you know, this is over like a thousand year time period. So you could, you can see why there is this almost confusion, I suppose you could say in the way to say, well, where did this turn up eventually? And then you've got the strands of the fact that you've actually got a blueprint for the Ark in the Bible so what's to say that the the Ark isn't just one thing it could be many it could be that people have built it many times and they're, they're claiming ownership and you, you've then got this uh, warning stamp on the Ark to say well don't open it up so you know people could say well here it is you look at it but are you going to take that risk to open up to see if the tablets are inside it? So you can see how the mystery, for me, in a mystery world, 
Um, where I've done a few episodes now looking into this, you can see how this this expands now. And you've got the building block, as I say, as I've just explained there with the, and that is a basic pattern from the story of Moses. As I say, if you want to. If you want to have a look into it, look into it a bit more deeper. There's some great detail with it, but I've just gone over it. Um, but you can see from a mystery perspective how this has been exchanged. It's been handed over. There's a blueprint where you can actually create the ark itself. So you could probably make it and say, yeah, I've got it. So the way I'm looking at this is, is that there might be many arcs out there. But how can you actually distinguish those from, from the original one? And the other thing I've got to mention here, I should have mentioned this from the when I was talking about the construction of it. It was actually built by two um, very talented uh, uh, workmen, master carpenters, uh, Bezel and Alohib. I think that's his name. So the, the, it was there are names of the people that actually constructed the ark in the time of Moses as well, which I should have mentioned. Um, so let's talk about some of the places where they believe the Ark is today. So one of the, uh, the number one spot here is Ethiopia, a uh, town or city called Axum. Uh, there is a church where they say that there was a virgin monk who spends his whole life in this church looking after the Ark and he is the only person is allowed to see it until he dies or they die and then there's like a changeover. Um, and no one is allowed to go in, it's only this person that is allowed to, to, to see it and they reckon it's been there for thousands of years since its creation. Um, so again, it's, it's one of those things where I suppose anybody could do that really, can they? They could say, yep, yeah, this is the church, this is where it is. Um, but whether you can go in and take a look, you're never going to be able to find out. So, um, But that is on, on, on the number one spot there is... Um, Another place in France, the, in south of France, called the Church of Rennes Le Chateau. Um, there was some speculation back in the 50s and 60s where people believed that there is a treasure below the church. I think some treasure hunters visited the church. It made the headlines, and up until today, uh, there's tens of thousands of visitors that go to that church to uh, see what the fuss is all about, I guess. Um, there's also. <laughs> I'm into all my treasure hunting TV shows and documentaries. There's the Curse of Oak Island. Oak Island, I think it's in Nova Scotia. Uh, I think up to nine seasons now. I spent an awful lot of money looking for treasure, and I think the guys there are convinced that there might be something under that island, including the Ark of the Covenant. So one day we might find out. And obviously, the other places, um, obviously, still in Jerusalem in uh, Temple Mount. Um, so today there's no real, got to be able to give you a, a clear answer on where the Ark is, but I think, as I said, um, you, there's a there's a blueprint. I keep going back to that. That's that's the thing that's kind of taken me. There is a blueprint design where you can build the Ark for yourself. Um, there's people over the centuries who've said that they've seen the Ark and it does tie up to that. Um, but who knows? Um, so one of the other theories... I've come away with um, just looking at this with the, you know, the, um, doing research and everything is what could it actually be if it was such a thing? Um, so they're saying that if you open it up, there's it can kill you if you look into it. Um, and it had like the power of God. So I think if you went back uh, 3,000 years to the construction of the Ark and this story, could it have been that they actually come across some sort of um, ancient technology that was advanced somehow? Um, could it have been like some sort of electric electric device that they came across that if... Now I'm going to do it, I'm going to throw this one in because it is a mystery show so I'm going to, I'm going to go into all possibilities here and if you ever watched... Um, like ancient aliens, I've got to bring aliens into this as well. Um, could it just be that there was some advanced technology? There was, you know, some of the, I've got to mention this as well, the ancient astronaut theorists believe that there was some other race that visited the Earth many years ago. And could it be that this is some technology that was found back in those times? So 
in the times um, of the Egyptians and the and the Israelites uh, would have been primitive times. If if someone had come across a device that was from today, uh, could they say, "Yeah, look at this," and it's like electricity? Would they think that that was some type of god back in those times, or was it? spanning out to the uh, lost city of Atlantis now there's some speculation that they were an advanced race was it the fact that um, they visited the you know the land of Canaan or Egypt that we just don't know about today was it the fact there was an ancient race that was um, feeding this technology um, to these people I'm just I'm just putting the possibilities out there um, because there was um, in Baghdad. Uh, this is in another. This is another mystery. I've gone into a few other mysteries today because obviously the part in the Red Sea as well, um, which has been looked at by scientists as, as a possibility with something geographical. But I won't get into that one. But um, archaeologists back in the I think it was like the 1920s out in Iraq came across a jar they just thought it was a jar and when they opened it up to their surprise it was actually like a battery with which was cladded in copper with a iron rod going through the middle and they said this this is a battery which goes back to 200 280 bc what were they doing with a battery back in those times you know and um so it's, I'm just putting that one out there. Was it the fact that they found some ancient technology which, if people looked at it and it was electricity, would they think, wow, this is some type of god? I'm just putting that one out there from a sort of scientific uh, point of view. So, And also, you know, to mention here as well, when the, you know, when I mentioned that the Philistines had the Ark, they said that they came down with some mysterious illness. Could it have been some type of atomic energy where they were suffering some sort of radiation uh, poisoning you don't know if you look into it in in scientific terms it could just be that the ark was something from an advanced technology that they had which they believed that was was like a god because i think if you went back to those times you might believe that um but i think at the end of the day i think you can look at, into it from a scientific point of view you can look into it from a sort of faith point of view i think in order for you to actually try and find the lost dog you need to have a look into this whichever way you want to have a look into it and i don't think there's any right or wrong really you know whether it's a faith thing or a scientific thing um or whether it's someone saying yeah we've got it or i've got it the point is is it you've got to go right back to the beginning and think well did this thing actually exist from the beginning um (laughs) and that's 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 probably the question it's not about where the ark is today i think it's did it really exist to start with and i think there must have been something from the beginning for us to be telling these um stories today and i think that's if you're going to try and find it you need to go back to that and and take those tools in with you whether it's like i say whether it's a faith or scientific possibility um and I think if you do that, you will find it. So the way I think I'm going to leave the show today is, you know, where's the Lost Ark? Well, there it is. It's <clears throat> it's all out there for you to sort of make your own uh, mind up about it. But uh, I still, at the same time, I think these stories are very, they're very interesting stories. They will always fascinate me. Um, and... He also made a hell of a good movie, which is Raiders of the Lost Ark, uh, which I'm a big fan of, which really, by the, at the end of this, um, really does go through everything that you probably need to know about, about the Ark in, in a good way, in an action-packed, uh, fun way. But there you go, guys. I'm going to leave it at that. Um, draw your own conclusions to it. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, so... Before I wrap up the show, let's do a little bit of admin. So I'm a proud member of the Legion Podcast Network, so please go and check out all the other shows on there, including my uh, movie review show, which is Bite Size Cinema Podcast. Um, I've just dropped a new episode on there, which is John Wick, so go and check that out. Um, I've got a Facebook page where I'm most active, so leave any reviews or comments or uh, if there's anything you want me to have a look at, put it on there. Um... You can find the Mystery Vault on iTunes, Spotify, 
and several other players on the internet. If you put in the Mystery Vault podcast, it will take you to somewhere where you can listen to the show. And um, let's talk about what I'm going to be doing next. The next one is a listener request from Nick Isaacs. Hello, Nick. Glad, hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> um, he's asked if I can do uh, a show on werewolves and the origins, so I'll be taking a look at that next. So look out for that. So um, as always, guys... Keep it mysterious, keep it safe, and I'll see you soon. I think this is a ghost story. I think this is a ghost story. I think this is a ghost story. Ghost, ghost, ghost story. Because one of you, sitting here in this room, is a whale. If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema PsyOps, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcast, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Ming Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Ghost Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Metal Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick Six Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which vs. the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found.